It's important that you be knowledgeable about the gear and equipment you will use in the hold. You will need to know how and when to work with hoisting gear such as wire rope, hooks, and slings. A lifting beam called a spreader bar is used to spread two or more lifting slings apart. The spreader bar is usually placed in the middle of the rigging configuration between the ship's hook and the load being lifted. Wire rope crown wires and down legs are connected to the spreader bar with the use of shackles. Hooks are connected directly to wire rope down legs or chain and connecting links. Hooks can have many different designs. Some hooks are placed into the eye of a sling. Others can be placed directly into the end of the pipe. Lifting slings can be either wire rope, synthetic, or chain. The job site supervisor will choose the most suitable type of sling for the cargo that is being lifted. Steel pipe is most commonly lifted with synthetic straps. Cargo such as beam and coil is lifted with braided chain. The braided chain is resistant to cuts and tears and will substitute for synthetic straps when working cargo with sharp corners. Slings should be inspected to ensure good working condition. A few examples of inspection criteria are periodically check slings throughout the shift for wear and tear that could affect their capacity and require taking them out of service. Make sure synthetic slings are free of excessive tears and abrasions and inspect chain slings for twisted or elongated links. Check wire rope for excessive broken wires. Shackle pins should remain fully screwed in place. Look for excessive wear or distortion of shackles or hooks. Always alert your supervisor of any concerns you may have with the condition of hoisting gear or slings. Remain alert to the lifting gear which will be entering the hatch on each crane cycle. Wire rope down legs, hooks, or chain can swing and potentially strike workers in the hold. Consider this example of a hold worker with his back to the lifting gear as the crane operator lowers the gear into the hatch. The flagman signals to lower the gear into the hatch, but does not alert the workers below. The braided chain is swinging and strikes the hold worker in the upper body with great force. This type of incident can result in head injuries, bruises, and fractures to any part of the body. Flaggers, hold workers, and crane operators should work together to prevent this incident. Flaggers should warn of gear entering the hold. The crane operator should do his best to limit the swing of the gear. And workers should communicate with each other when the gear is entering the hold. All lifting gear and cranes have safe working capacities. Never hook up more cargo than has been authorized by the job site supervisor. When it's time to sling and hoist a load, ensure that the eye of the synthetic or braided chain sling is securely in the bowl of the lifting hook. When slinging hook pipe or steel plate, make sure the pipe hook or plate dog is securely on the cargo intended to be lifted. Check the placement of your slings and lifting hooks. They should be at an equal distance from the center of the load so the load will remain level when lifted. The hoist signal should only be given by a designated flagger and only when the load is safely slung and the workers have moved to a safe distance. In this example, a worker is standing next to a load of loose pipe. As it is hoisted, the load leaves a cavity in the stow. A nearby pipe then rolls into this open space. Because the worker is standing on the rolling pipe, she loses her footing. Her ankle and lower leg are crushed between two pieces of pipe. Always take the time and effort to move away from the load before it is lifted. Be sure you are not standing near the load or any adjacent cargo as the load is being hoisted. Cargo adjacent to the load may shift or roll when the load is lifted. Stay clear of overhead loads as they are taken up and out of the hold. The gang in this scenario is discharging pre-slung loose pipe. One worker fails to get out of the danger zone. As the load is suspended, one of the synthetic straps fails. This causes the pipe to fall into the hatch. This worker is struck by the falling pipe and killed. After you hook up a load, move to a place that will be clear of danger. Consider the travel path of the load and potential fall zone when choosing a safe place to stand. Keep in mind, the danger zone of falling cargo may not be limited to the area directly under the load. Always stay out of the way and be aware as cargo is hoisted out of the hold. Let's go over some specific precautions you can take to protect yourself against hazards from working certain types of steel cargo. Pipe can either be loose or bundled. 
Hook breakout and pre-slung pipe have three distinct discharge methods. Bundled pipe is usually smaller in diameter and banded together. Pre-slung pipe is loose or bundled with existing synthetic straps in place. For pre-slung pipe, ensure both straps for each pre-slung unit are properly hooked. Inspect the visible portion of the straps for tears, abrasions, or excessive wear before hoisting. Hook pipe is typically discharged with a multi-drop spreader. When using a multi-drop spreader, make sure you connect the same pipe with the correct corresponding hooks. Incorrectly hooked pipe could scissor, resulting in an unsafe lift. If one of the pipes is hooked on one end, but not the other, the pipe can be pushed into the bulkhead or sent falling to the other side of the hold. Breakout pipe must be hoisted on one end with wire to allow for the placement of synthetic straps. Be sure to get a good bite on the load with the breakout wire. Always use a canary or chicken wire to pull the synthetic sling safely under the suspended load. In this example, a breakout wire isn't adequately placed on the end of the load before the slings are placed underneath. A worker reaches for a synthetic strap without using a chicken wire and exposes himself to injury from the suspended load. The breakout wire slips from the end of the pipe, causing the load to crush the worker's arm. Always use a canary or chicken wire to pull the sling from under the load. This keeps your head, torso, and arms out of harm's way in the event the load should unexpectedly fall because of an improperly placed breakout wire. Any type of steel pipe has the potential to roll, which can result in injuries to feet, ankles, and lower legs. In this example, the gang overworks the square of the hatch, creating inclines in the wings. These inclines create conditions that allow the pipe to roll toward the center of the hole. The worker's leg is crushed by the heavy rolling pipe. A primary way to prevent pipe from rolling is to maintain a level stow. Work the pipe tier by tier whenever possible. It's also important to scan the hatch to identify pipes that have a potential to roll and chalk them with dunnage if necessary. Chain or synthetic straps may be used for hoisting steel beam and rebar. Safety precautions when handling steel beams and rebar are similar to that of handling steel pipe. Again, always use a canary hook or chicken wire to pull slings or chain from underneath the suspended load. Before discharging coil, be sure to check with your foreman before cutting any steel banding. Keep in mind that banding is under tension and can snap back on a worker if cut improperly. Position yourself to one side while keeping your face and body away from any snapback. Be especially alert when you must walk on steel coils. The rounded shape presents a unique and difficult walking surface with frequent gaps in the stow. When working steel plate and slabs, pinch point hazards are common. For example, between plate dogs and plate, your fingers are in danger if hooking up loads. Improper placement of plate dogs can expose your hands to crush injuries. Serious injuries can occur if you are caught between the plate and bulkhead. Your job on the waterfront comes with a responsibility to make good choices that will affect your own personal safety as well as the safety of others around you. Skill and awareness are necessary to load and discharge steel cargo and are key to you returning safely to your home and family. In this program, you have learned the importance of using your personal protective equipment and attending pre-ship safety meetings. You learned how to recognize common hazards when accessing the vessel. We describe some of the stevedoring gear that will be used and some of the precautions to take in order to work safely with steel cargo. Make a promise to yourself and your family to take hold of your safety every day you work on the waterfront.